This is an image and I was very easily able to download it. Actually, anyone can. This collage containing 5,000 digital art pieces was recently sent up for auction. But here's the catch. Unlike a painting or a sculpture, this was not physical. The image was sold as an NFT or a non-fungible token for which someone paid almost 502 crore rupees. 502 crore rupees. I mean, what? How does that even make any kind of sense? So let me take you into the wild, wild world of NFTs. Cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, blockchain, tokens. We've been bombarded by all these words from all avenues, be it Twitter or news articles or conversations with your fancy tech savvy friends. And initially my reaction was like, and I'm guessing a lot of you didn't have 100% clarity about it either. But don't worry, I read up a little bit, I did some research and I've got you covered. First, let's understand what a token is. In this context, a token is a cryptographic asset. There are two types of tokens, fungible and non-fungible. Fungible means replaceable, interchangeable, kind of like how cash is interchangeable. One note of 100 rupees is replaced with another note of 100 rupees. Honestly, doesn't make any difference to me. See, this is where NFTs are different. Non-fungible tokens cannot be replaced. They are not interchangeable as each NFT is unique. To understand how NFTs work in the practical world, we first need to understand how blockchain works. Because the core of what makes an NFT valuable is that the ownership of the NFT is recorded in a blockchain. Uh, don't worry, I'll explain. Blockchain is a digital ledger, kind of like a notebook. The ledger is a record of transactions. But blockchain is a little different than a regular ledger. How? Well, a blockchain holds a bunch of information in groups called blocks. Now, the interesting part is that when one block is filled, it's chained virtually or linked to the last filled block in the chain. This chain or sequence cannot be broken. To understand this more clearly, let's say you add some new information, which is stored in block number three. This block is chained to its previous block, block number two, and in turn, block number two is chained to block number one. Now, if you're wondering how exactly do these blocks have tons of information chained to each other, you're not alone. See, each block has a hash, which is a cryptographic algorithm. Its purpose is simple. Every input of letters and numbers is converted into an encrypted output by hash. And each block's hash is unique. It's like a unique ID based on the information contained within. So if you change the information, the ID changes. Each block also contains the hash of the previous block. This is the prime reason that blockchain tech is very secure. Because if someone tampers with the hash of block one, it will not match the hash of block one stored in block two. If one block's hash is changed, the hash of each subsequent block will also need to be changed. And you can't change the hash of each individual block so quickly as each block takes time to be added. Like Bitcoin, each block takes around 10 minutes to be added to the chain. Now blockchain is a distributed ledger. It uses a peer-to-peer -peer network, which basically means there's no centralized server or entity. And it allows access, validation, and record updating to the participants on the network called nodes. So if there's any tampering, it'll be invalidated by other users. Combine all of these factors and it's pretty difficult to tamper with blockchain tech. That's why blockchain is referred to as an immutable ledger, something which can't be changed. NFT uses this very mechanism, which is why it's so, so secure. NFTs can be any digital asset, from videos to JPEGs to GIFs. Think of any media, it can be an NFT. And a lot of people have taken advantage of this. NBA's Top Shots, which has NBA's highlight reels, by the end of Feb 2021, Topshot NFTs had made sales of over $200 million in total. Take this 10 second clip that we had spoken about in one of our earlier videos. It was sold as an NFT for $6.6 .6 million. My expectations per day are to put a JPEG on the internet, not to make a masterpiece. Remember, this isn't a painting that you would physically own and then you have to sit and convince your parents why you spent so much money on something you can't actually touch. Okay, so the most obvious question is a piece of art that I buy, can it be viewed or downloaded by other people? And if yes, why would I spend crores of money on it? Think of this, the Mona Lisa. If someone clicks a picture of the painting, does that diminish the value of the original? Same thing applies to digital assets. I look at it as just nothing more than a proof of ownership backed by the blockchain. The transaction of the purchase of an NFT is recorded on blockchain. 
a block containing various transactions is created, verified by the nodes on the network. Then the block is added to a blockchain and the transaction is complete. Each NFT contains a code for identification. Now any digital asset that is to be sold as an NFT has to be registered on a platform which is selling NFTs. They go there, they upload it, then they set the details like description, the price, whatever they want, if they want it to be open for bidding, royalty, amongst other things. When it's eventually sold, the buyer will pay using a digital wallet that's probably used by the website or the platform. But in what currency do you add money to a digital wallet? Like a lot of marketplaces, except Ether, a cryptocurrency. So in case you are on such a platform, you need to first buy Ether. But some places like NBA Top Shot allows you to just add money from your credit card. Another thing to consider is that buyers own the NFT or the image or the JPEG, but they don't control its distribution. So what exactly makes people spend crazy amounts of money on NFTs? Well, the answer is not so simple. And honestly, there isn't even a single reason. These two gentlemen were revealed to be the buyers of Beeple's $69 million art. Vignesh Sundaresan and Anand Venkateswaran, who run a crypto fund called Metaverse. When we think about NFTs, and it's unconfiscatable, it's a huge powerful, um, it's a huge powerful asset, and it's for eternity, right? So that's that's why I got into NFTs. And there are many similar reasons being floated. It's just collector's culture. Just think of someone who's collecting art. This time, it's just digitally. And for them, art also means this. Then there's also patronage. You're supporting an artist, an association with a public figure in a special kind of way. But the most prominent factor to buy an NFT is that you own it. And others also know that you own it. It's on a transparent blockchain. So digital art existed before this. This collage that we keep talking about that people sold, he'd been creating those images since 2007. But there was no market for him initially. And they have ignored it for quite a good reason, actually. There was no way to collect it. Like, there was truly no technology available to collect my art in sort of a natively digital form. NFTs didn't just suddenly pop out of thin air. They were there before. But why a sudden surge for all of this? Some say the pandemic had a role in this crazy surge for NFTs. People were forced to sit indoors, and hence they were cut out of buying stuff in the real world. For the sellers, this means more opportunities in digital art and more ways to monetize. And the buyer has a choice to spend or bid how much money they want. If it means more to them, they'll probably bid more. Basically, it's created a flexible market. So what's the place of NFTs in the world today? And how do we think it's going to move forward? The first thing that comes to mind is investments. Today, NFTs are emerging as a valuable trade commodity. As soon as you buy them, you can resell them. The time and the effort taken to sell or buy traditional art isn't there for NFTs. Another factor which distinguishes NFTs with traditional art is smart contracts. The creator can earn commission on subsequent sales like Beeple is. And the scope of NFTs is not limited to a certain type of media. NBA Top Shots is an example that people are willing to pay absurd amounts of money for the best show moments at the NBA. Nine blocks of virtual land were bought for around 1.5 million and the world's first digital NFT house was sold for half a million dollars. As per Bloomberg Quint, NFTs are also used as collateral security. It's just the potential is immense. But wait, there are other considerations to make before you decide to buy an NFT, like energy consumption. Many marketplaces for NFT art use the cryptocurrency Ether. As per Time magazine, Ethereum mining consumes 26.5 terawatt hours of electricity annually, which when compared is almost the amount of electricity required by Ireland, which has a population of 5 million people. Also, there are instances of user accounts on platforms offering NFTs being breached for fraud. I mean, there's a lot of skepticism as far as NFTs are concerned in general. What if this is just a technological bubble? What if it bursts at any point of time? But the fact that Christie's, the famous 255-year-old British auction house, which put up every day for auction, has made an entry into NFTs should tell you which direction the tide is turning. So, in which kind of digital assets will Indian investors invest? And which Indian artists will bring the next big headline as the seller of a million dollar piece? This is something I guess we're all kind of curious about. At the end of the day, the most pertinent question is will NFTs stand the test of time? And I'm pretty sure that's one thing the digital world will be tracking intensely. But not without some high stakes of their own. 
I hope this video gave you a little bit of an insight into the world of NFTs. But tell us in the comments which kind of tech you'd want us to cover next. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. The kinds of videos we want to make are to ask fun and compelling questions, explore weird and intriguing stories, and delve into secret histories. So if that's something you're interested in, this is the channel for you. Don't forget to tell us what you like in the comments.